and welcome to the September edition of HR Hot Topics. I'm your host, Jody Schaefer, and as always, my aim is to make this the most informative five minutes of your month. This month's topic is silent quitting, or you may have heard it referred to as quiet quitting. And this is a phrase that's getting a lot of media attention right now. It's all over LinkedIn. Apparently, it's on TikTok, too. I don't know. I'm not on TikTok, but, but I hear it's on TikTok. Um, and the, the idea of quiet quitting or silent quitting, the, the name is a bit of a misnomer. It's not as though the employee is actually leaving the workplace. It instead refers to somebody who is working only to the minimum expectations of the job. In other words, they are there physically, but not present mentally. Uh, now, a lot of reasons for this, right? Uh, perhaps the employee is burned out. Maybe they've got other commitments going on in their personal life, or they've got health conditions that they're managing, and there's only so much mental energy one can devote to any given topic at a time. And so in this case, work is sort of taking a back seat. It's not that the person's not doing their job, they're just not doing anything extra. Uh, for some individuals, this idea of quiet quitting is because they feel like they've not been appreciated in the workplace, that it, it doesn't matter if they go above and beyond because it doesn't affect their pay and it doesn't affect promotional opportunities. Um, and so at a certain point, you just sort of throw your hands up and say, uh, I'm no longer as engaged as I once was. Um, but there's a lot of sort of debate back and forth over whether quiet quitting is a bad thing. Now, from an employer perspective, of course, we're thinking, well, we can't have everybody on the team just coming to work and doing the bare minimum, right? A team is a mix of folks that, you know, you've got role players, you've got some squeaky wheels that we've got to address, but we always need a couple of rock stars to make the world go round. And in the world of quiet quitting, this, these aren't your rock stars, right? These are folks that are intentionally choosing to be sort of B and C players. It's not that they're not capable of more, perhaps, but they are choosing not to invest more time and energy into the job than what is absolutely necessary. Now, as I said, there's a lot of debate around this because you'll have individuals, mostly on the employee side, that say, wait a minute, that's just called doing your job. I go to work. I do my job and I come home and I'm paid to do a job. Your expectation that I'm gonna do more than what I'm paid for is founded in this idea of work that is outdated and antiquated. And in fact, studies are starting to show these changing ideas around what it means to work. And I've shared a lot of that with you in past HR Hot Topics episodes. Um, it is interesting though, when you look at Gen Z, which is the youngest generation in our workforce today, and the younger millennials, 77%, um, according to a recent poll, are more likely to apply for a job that lists kindness, uh, mental health, and work-life balance in the posting. In other words, attitudes around what it means to work and where work plays in the other parts of our life are radically shifting. Couple that with a pandemic that required many of us to reevaluate our priorities and where we choose to spend our time. Again, the, the great resignation or the great reshuffle are evidence of that. And then layer on top of it, the workforce shortages that employers are experiencing right now, employees are in the driver's seat. So this idea that you would do more than what you're paid to do is kind of flying in the face of these ideas about work for the generation, the youngest generation that's in the workforce right now and the fact that there's a supply and demand problem and right now employers aren't calling the shots. So where all of this will lead remains to be seen, right? We, we are seeing signs of a recession. And so whether employees will continue to be in the driver's seat for the foreseeable future is unknown. Um, so I think there will be some kind of back and forth about this, but I do think it's worth talking about because if employees in your workplace are showing signs of quiet quitting, um, that's your cue to check in, right? And some of these signs, especially if you are in a remote or a hybrid work environment, it's harder um, to catch the signs because you're not seeing the person physically on a regular basis. 
And so without making regular um, attempts to check in with them, intentional conversations to see how they are and how things are going and what some of their pain points are, you may miss some obvious signs. But I wanna give you a few of them um, just so that we all kind of have our radar up. The first, especially if you are in a remote or a hybrid work environment, is when you have folks that are showing up for meetings, but they're not participating in the meeting. They're not speaking, the camera's not on, um, only when called upon do they give a response and it's sort of a lackluster response and they're not showing up or participating in anything that would be deemed extra. So all those social activities that you've been spending a lot of time and money and effort to put on to try to rebuild employee engagement and relationship building and camaraderie, they're choosing not to participate in those. So those are a couple of signs, right, that you may have an employee that um, is sort of checking out. And again, sometimes the checking out is an intentional choice because the reward benefit equation, right, isn't there for them. So they're trying to rebalance the, um, the effort piece of that equation to more align with what they feel they're getting rewarded for. But sometimes there's something else going on, right? It's perhaps a passive aggressive move. They didn't get something that they feel was owed to them that they want or maybe they've got demands in their home life right now, they're just pulling them away from the workplace. And as an employer, if you don't ask, you won't know. Now, there's no guarantee they tell you, but at least the, the you know, effort of asking sends the right message that you care and you're checked in. And certainly if there's something that you can be doing to stave this trend and get your rock stars back in a place where they are excited to come to work do not just what's asked of them, but are interested in expanding skill sets and doing a bit more, I think we all benefit as a result. So I'm gonna put some articles down below, I always do, right? If you are on our email list and you're viewing this in your inbox, you'll see the articles in the message. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to the email list so that you can get these articles. But a little bit more information on this trend and some things that we can all do to try to stave it off. So uh, with that, I'll leave you and I will see you guys back here again in October.